3.3 optimization problems. So with this, what I'm going to do is um, three uh, shorter questions. And then in the next lesson, I'll look into um, some more difficult problems with you. Now, these three questions I'm going to do, at least the first two, are very popular questions that you see often. I'm sure you've done them in um, even grade 10, grade 11, the famous open top box. So um, we'll go through those and show how now you can use calculus to solve them, which is much easier than the way you used to have to do in grade 10. So the barn question is usually have, it doesn't have to be a barn, it could be a swimming area. You're trying to, um, and you might have the shore here and you're going to put in like this line here. The barn is some length and then you're going to use your wire to um, make a fenced in area for whatever animals you want to put up there. And maybe you might have to divide it into two, so you'd have to change uh, your variables. But let's say this is when we've got 120 meters of wire, we want to maximize the area. Now, another question I get from students is, well, what do you mean maximize? Well, what if you had to minimize the area? Well, you don't. You, it's just going to happen to be maximizing the area, and you can test that, and we will look at how to test whether you've maximized it. So I have 120 meters of wire. Now this is this is what we call the constraint to the question. If I had 100,000 meters of wire, you could make a pretty darn big field, field, uh, field, or yeah, I guess you call it a field that you could fancy in. But if you only had 60 meters of wire or 80 meters of wire, of course that's going to restrict how big the um, fenced area can be. Now I notice we're getting a little some jiggling here. Let me just move this away from the desk a bit so you don't get dizzy. It makes me dizzy. Okay, so let's say this is a, what I want to fence in. I have 120 meters of fencing and so I'm going to um, do some let statements. So let's say let A be the area. A be the area. X the length and y will be the width. So now I'm going to write that onto my my diagram here so we get a better picture. A picture is worth a thousand words and that's true in math as well. Okay, so with 120 meters of wire that's talking about the perimeter. So my equation of constraint, which is constrained by the amount of wire, is going to be the perimeter is equal to 2y plus x. And I know that the perimeter has to be 120 meters. That's all I have. p is equal to 120. So I have 2y plus x is equal to 120. OK, but I don't want to maximize the perimeter. So this is just an equation that's going to help me maximize the area. So you want to maximize the area, so you want to write that equation out. What is area? Area is length times width. So with this perimeter um, equation here, I can write one of the variables in terms of the other here. And the easiest, of course, would be to solve for x. So I say x is 120 minus 2y. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to take that equation and plug it into this equation for x. And that's going to give me an equation in terms of only one variable. So I have 120 minus 2y, and that's going to be times y. Okay, so now that I have that set up, I can start solving my equation here. So in grade 10 or even grade 11, you probably would have set this equal to zero and solved for the roots of your equation, right, or the zeros of the function, and then found the halfway point. But in calculus, we want to take the derivative of this. Because it's calculus, you take the derivative. It's so easy. Okay, so I'm going to expand it first because that would make the derivative much easier to take. So now I'm going to say for maximum area, 
Well, maybe not maximum area. Maybe I'd say for critical values. It's kind of a, a, a term that you use a lot when you're doing um, curve sketching. So critical values, set, set a prime equal to zero. So if I set this equal to zero, I have 120. Oh, I didn't take the derivative yet. Let's do the derivative first. So a prime is equal to 120 minus 4y. So for critical value set a prime equal to zero, I should have left more room for this. So I'm going to say 120 minus 4y equals zero. So 4y equals 120 and y is equal to 30. So if y is equal to 30, then x is going to be equal to, I plug in 30 here, and I would get x is 60. Okay, so how do I know that I found a maximum? Well, I know for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is a parabola that is concave down. It's going this way, right? So it's going to have a maximum. You can also use something called the first derivative test. And I'm going to show you how that works. Because the derivative is um, 0 when y is 30, I can say, well, if I was at 29 or 31, what would the derivative be? So if it has a slope of 0 and it is a maximum, I'll draw you a little picture over here. So if it's a maximum on to the left of the maximum value, which in this case was 30, on this side, the slopes need to be positive, And on this side, the slopes would have to be negative. That's what we call a first derivative test. And we get more into that when we do curve sketching. I don't know why they didn't mention it earlier, but I, I think it's important when you're doing this so you can check. So if I said, okay, what's a prime? Now, it just it can be any value to the left of 30. So let's say a prime at, um, I don't know, let's do 20 because it would be easier to calculate. So if I put in 20 here, I would have 120 minus 80 is 40. Uh, is it 40? 80? Yeah, 40. You don't really need to calculate that. I just need to know that it's positive. And a prime at let's say this was 30, so let's go to 35. And if I put in 35 here, 35 times 4 is uh, 140, so that would be negative. So that means there is a maximum at y equals 30 for my equation. And therefore, the length the length is, is x, so 60 meters, and the width is 30 to maximize the area. And there you go. Okay, so another very famous question is the open topped box question. Now the open top box, um, I have a little visual for you here. So let's take a look at something that I set up here to cut out. So I took a piece of paper and I said, okay, if this length was 40 centimeters, then how long would it be from here, from here to here, right? From here to here. So I have 40 and I'm subtracting these two X's. So this is going to be 40 minus 2X. And on the other side, if it's 20 centimeters from here to here, and I take out an X and an X, I've taken out two X's. So this is going to be 20 minus 2X. Now you probably know this. You've done these questions so many times before. So that gives me a length and a width. And you can see that if I fold this up along the sides like that, I would have an open top box. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, so that's what an open top box is, and you see them a lot. And in this one, what we're trying to do is we have a box that has 40 centimeters of length, 20 centimeters, and I just said that this length here between these two little squares 
is going to be 40 minus 2x, if these are x by x. And I showed you that this length here is going to be 20 minus 2x. Okay, so once you've done your draw, your little diagram here, drawings are good. Let's read it again. It says it will have a square cut out. Okay, we folded it. Find the dimensions that will maximize its volume. So I need an equation for volume. So what is the volume? And I think it's supposed to have, um, yeah, that's all. I thought maybe it was supposed to have a certain volume. We're just trying to maximize the volume. Okay, so we know what volume is for an open top box. Volume is length times width times height, right? Okay, so my length is 40 minus 2x. My width is 20 minus 2x. And my height is x. Okay, so the height of that box, just like I showed you here, this height from here to here is x. Right, we cut a square that was x by x. Okay, so now that I have the dimensions, I'm going to expand and simplify this and then take the derivative. So let's go, we have 800 minus 80x, 80x minus 40x, do this fast, 4x squared, everything times x. And let's expand, let's simplify and also um, multiply by x. So I have 4x cubed. And I have minus 120x squared plus 800x. Okay, so now I'm going to say for critical values, CVs, set V prime equal to zero. So I have to take V prime first. So V prime, remember it's calculus, take the derivative. 12x squared minus 240x plus 800 and I'm going to set that equal to zero. Now if you take a look at this, these everything divides by four, right? So let's just simplify that a bit. So 3x squared minus 60x plus 200. Okay, so I set this equal to zero and I want to solve it. Okay, so it's a quadratic. I don't know numbers that multiply to 600 and add to minus 60. So when you're stuck, you can always use a quadratic formula. So x is going to be equal to, do you remember your formula? Negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Make sure it's all over it. So my b is this value, right? Negative 60. My a is 3 and my c is 200. So that makes this 60 plus or minus the square root of 60 squared minus 4 times 3 times 200 all over 2 times 3. Okay, now whatever you do, don't divide 6 into 60 and think you're done. It has to divide into both of these. Very common mistake though. Okay, so it just so happened that I did this before, save some time, and I get 1,200 under here. I'm dividing by 6. And if you do the math here, um, 1,200, you could probably write it as uh, 20 root 3, right? 400 times 3, square root 400 is 20. But that's not necessary. You can plug all this into your calculator. Let's, let's do just one step. So 1,200, that's 400, I'll put it in brackets, okay, 400 times 3. And the square root of 400 is 20. So I can take out a 20 out front here. So I have 20 root 3 over 6. And then I could divide everything by 2. It just makes it a little neater. Um, but because you're trying to evaluate for a specific answer, it doesn't really matter that you... Go ahead and simplify this, right? Okay, so if I do the math on this, I would get x is approximately equal to 
and 4.2. Remember, you're going to get two solutions because you're adding and subtracting 10 root 3. So once you have these two solutions, then you have to, um, you have to see whether or not they're both admissible. So if we go back to 20 minus 2x here, so my width was 20 minus 2x, and if I put in 15.8, it's going to be like 20 minus 30, which is a negative length. So this one is inadmissible because it is too large. Inadmissible. So 4.2 is my solution. Now, the question asked to find the dimensions. Make sure you don't stop because you've got one answer. You have to go ahead and go back and find um, the length and the width. The x is just the, the height here, right? So this is height, H-E-I-G-H-T, height. And then you would find the length, and I'm not going to not going to do all that for um, step by step. So I get 31.6 centimeters. The width is equal to 11.6 centimeters. Okay, so um, the other thing, if we took um, the first derivative now again, which was this one here, and we could check to see if 4.2 is a minimum, uh, a maximum value. So again, if we want a maximum, we want something that's going like this, right? So here's our here's our 4.2. So I could check the derivative at, let's say, 3. So v prime at 3 and plug it in. So I'd have 9 times 12, what's that, 108, um, minus... Um, minus 720 plus 800. So minus 700 plus 820, that's 80. And this was already positive. So this is greater than zero. So that means I do have positive slope on this side. And if I go to the other side of four, so let's say I said V prime at five. If you plug that in, I'm sure you will get something that is less than zero because it just so happens to be true, right? Okay, and that's that would be what you call first derivative test. Okay, I'm going to do one more question. I've got flipped on the back here. And this is a question from um, the homework exercises. And it, uh, I don't really know what the number was. Let me straighten this. So it says, a net enclosure for practicing golf shots is open on one end. Find the dimensions that will minimize the amount of netting for a volume of 144 meters squared, netting only on the sides, top, and the far end. So basically, um, we have a far end back here. So we're going to put netting here. We're going to put netting here and here. We don't have to do the bottom. And this is where you would go in. Okay, so it's open here. But it's closed here. So we have three sides that require netting. So um, we're trying to maximize or minimize the amount of netting. And the netting here is, this is surface area, right? Surface area. And we're going to be looking for a volume equation. So we need surface area and volume. So they do tell you um, they give dimensions like x, x, and y here. So it's a square-based pyramid. So it's the area of the base times the height gives you volume. So area base times height. And in this case, that would be x squared y. Right. So the area of the base, x times x, and the height is y. So that gives me the volume formula I want. But I need to do something with this 144 meters squared. That's going to be the volume. So let's set that right away equal to x squared y. And now you know that you have to be able to get rid of one of these variables. So let's look at what the surface area is equal to. Surface area is going to be, so this is um, x times y, this one. This is going to be 
x times y, and this is going to be x times y. So I have three, these three sides are both x, y's. So I have 3xy plus x squared, right? And I have 144 is equal to x squared y. And I'm trying to minimize the amount of netting. So I want to minimize this. Minimize the surface area. Surface area. Okay, so I want to plug this into this equation. So I can find y here. y is 144 over x squared, right? Just divide by x squared, you both sides. And I get y equals 144 over x squared. So I'm going to plug that in here. 3x times 144 over x squared plus x squared. So Simplify this first, so 3 times 144 is 432, and I have an x in the top and an x squared in the bottom, so this is going to be x to the negative 1 plus x squared. And now we're all set to take the derivative. So if I take the derivative, so surface area prime equals, so I have minus 432, so minus 1 times this, x to the negative 2, or I could put it in the denominator as being positive, plus 2x. Okay, so in order for me to set this equal to 0, I want to find a common denominator first, so I can just set the numerator equal to 0. So I'll put everything over x squared. That means this is going to be 2x cubed, right? Because I multiply, uh, sorry, I put an x squared here and an x squared here. So it gives me 2x cubed and minus 432 on the bottom. Sorry, not on the bottom, on the top. Okay, so now what I want to do is say for critical values, set the surface area derivative equal to zero, because remember, that's where the slope will be zero. So if I set this to zero, I'm only worried about the numerator here. X can't be zero in this question. You can't have a zero length. So we should maybe say X not equal to zero. I would like that. Okay, so now I have two X cubed is equal to 432. I divide by two, so X cubed is equal to 216 cubed. x cubed equals 216 and x is equal to the cube root of 216 and that means x is going to be equal to 6. Okay so if x is equal to 6 we have to still find y because it asks for the dimensions. y is going to be equal to 144 over 36 and that's going to be 4. So we're going to have, it didn't say if it was in meters or something, but I'm guessing it was 3 meters by or 6 meters by 4 meters. It's kind of a weird shape. But anyway, I don't play golf. Okay, so therefore the find the dimensions, dimensions, don't forget concluding statements are four meters by four meters by six meters. So that's length, height. Or is it, this is length, width, and height. Ta-da, that's done. Okay, now again, you could check to see if it is a minimum. So if it's a minimum, you want negative slope, then positive slope, right? So if x is six, so we had our surface area formula. If you go back here and plug in, say, 4, um, I don't know if I can do that quickly in my head, that would be 128 here. So this would still be negative in the numerator divided by a positive, so that will be negative on this side. And if I put in something bigger than 6, let's go to 7. I don't know what 7 cubed is, but I'm sure if you, let's see. 7 to the power of 3, 
is 343 times 2 is going to be 686. So that makes this positive up here. So it will be positive on this side. And this is where your minimum is at x equals 6. Okay? So that's three little problems for you. And I promise more. I'll do some surface area questions and some minimizing distance ones in the next video.